Hi everyone, it's Lori. I am here wrapping up our final summer vidcast with our Devo called Radical Faith. So what inspired me to write this this week is Oswald Chambers from his Devo called My Utmost for His Highest. Here he speaks about faith um, in two different lights and it's profound and it changed my life. It changed my week and I really hope it changes yours. So when I say radical faith, what I mean is radical from the root, the original definition of a word. That's what I mean when I say radical. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen. So to have the assurance of something means to have a confidence of a tangible thing. Um, and faith is the assurance of things hoped for. So I'm hoping, I'm trusting, I'm waiting, I'm wanting, and I have a conviction, which means I have some sort of proof or evidence in my life of something I haven't seen yet. That is faith. Great, right? Oswald Chambers says that two things are required to have faith in Jesus. One is an absolute trust in who he is. That's key. It's not a partial trust in who he is, and it's not a trust in our social experiences or vicariously through the experiences of others. It's not a trust in our own convictions or our own common sense. It's not a trust in who I am. It, and it's not a trust in only what Jesus says, who he is. That's different. Um, it's not a trust in what he's going to do or where he's going to lead me. Um, to actually be willing to trust Jesus and put my life in his hands on purpose seems risky to someone who has not experienced Jesus. But once you hear the voice of the living God, once you understand his power at work within you, it seems like less of a risk because suddenly you begin to understand how much more trustworthy his hands are than mine are. And so it's a no brainer to put your life in his hands, to obey his voice, um, to follow him because he is the ultimate authority in our lives. Um, now to know Jesus, um, putting my trust in who he is, um, to know Jesus is different than knowing about Jesus. Do you agree with me? I mean, you can, meet someone and spend time with them, get to know them, develop your relationship with them, have experiences with a person, or you can just read about them in some sort of news article. Do you see the difference? Um, news is news. People will say whatever, you know, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but to actually know the person of Jesus, that is key in a life of faith. And faith is not in what Jesus says only, but in himself. If we only look at what he says, we shall never believe. We have to know him as a person, as a friend, as Lord, and as master. Many of us, Oswald Chambers says, are loyal to our notions of Jesus, but how many of us are loyal to him? So maybe many of us call ourselves Christians and we're loyal to the idea of Jesus. You know, we're behind it. Yeah, I know that the Bible is true. I acknowledge that it's a good book, but it has not changed my life. I'm not loyal to you, Jesus. I'm not going to obey your voice. I'm not going to obey your commands. Um, I just think that you're awesome. Please get me into heaven when I want on my terms. But to be loyal to Jesus means to say, okay, Lord, if this is what you say is necessary for a life of faith, then I will do this because I love you and trust you. Do you see the great, great difference? Because we call ourselves Christians and because we um, believe the Bible or believe that Jesus is real and true does not make us followers of Christ. To follow him means to obey him. And that requires faith. Loyalty to Jesus means I have to step out where I do not see anything. Loyalty to my notions means that I clear the ground first by my intelligence. Faith is not intelligent understanding. It's not just here, right? Faith is deliberate commitment to a person where I see no way. So that requires absolute trust in the person of Jesus. So 
Are you loyal to Jesus or are you loyal to the notion of him? Because when once you get into personal contact with Jesus Christ, you will never be moved again. That's what Oswald says. And once that happens, we can obey him with glad, reckless joy because we have perfect trust in who he is. And it's really fun after that. Uh, He also says a couple of really cool things I want to share with you. Faith never knows where it is being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. So imagine the shepherd and the sheep, you know, the flock, they don't necessarily know which pasture they're going to or which valley they have to travel to or which mountain they're going around, but you know the voice of the shepherd and you will follow at his command because if you don't, you're going to get thrown to the wolves, right? (laughs) So you don't know necessarily where you're going, but you can trust his voice. Um, And this is the life of Abraham. Um, What he did is just that. God said, Abraham, I want you to move to this foreign country. And Abraham didn't ask why I need an explanation. I need to know your plan of action. Abraham just said, yes, Lord. And he did it. And that's because he was a man of faith. And that's what God wants for us too. The life of faith, are you ready? Is not in mounting up with wings, but in walking without fainting. Isn't that so sweet? Um, A lot of us prefer the mountaintop experiences, but the reality is everyday life can be tough and you've got to walk it out. Um, And faith is trusting that you're going to walk and not faint, that God will carry you through day to day, victory to victory, glory to glory. So the second thing required for faith in Jesus is exercise and testing. And that leads to reckless confidence in who God is. So imagine two very different images, a couch potato and a triathlete, Um, two very different discipline lives. Um, The couch potato is probably a lot lazier. You know, um, his priorities aren't to grow or her. Um, The triathlete, um, dedicated, devoted, you know, eye on the prize, no matter what, rain or shine, right? And isn't that really what we all aspire to be. Don't we want to be a person like that? You know, imagine with me, a spiritual triathlete. Wow. What would that look like? I for sure don't want to be a spiritual couch potato. I think that's gross. Um, Faith is meant to be exercised in er every area of life. So not just the physical, but also the spiritual, the relational, the mental, And all of these things, God will work out in you day by day if you let him. And please let him. Oswald Chambers says that faith is the heroic effort of your life. You fling yourself in reckless confidence on God. There are spots where that faith has not worked in us as yet. Places untouched by the life of God. There were none of those spots in Jesus Christ's life. And there are to be none in ours. Wow. That is a bold statement, Oswald. He says that Jesus was spotless and we can be too. If we choose to be, we can choose to have a life of faith. We can choose for God to refine us day by day, to be tested, to be tried, and to win, to succeed. What kind of a test is it if you can't even pass it, right? Um, That's not the point of God's test, just to show us day by day how much we fail. No, it's because he wants us to improve and to grow. Uh, So take hold of that, okay? God does not want you to fail. He wants you to pass the test, and he wants you to pass the ultimate test. Um, And your life will test you. And at the end, you will choose. Will I choose to be with Jesus forever or not? So James 1, 2 to 4 says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And I'm imagining that spiritual triathlete again, the one who's been tested and tried and maybe 
has messed up on a couple of tests, but is growing and is succeeding and is improving and is changing. Uh, are we letting God change our hearts? Are we letting God change our lives? If we're not, I think we have to ask ourselves if we really are living a life of faith, a life that trusts him as Lord and Savior and as master. So um, Oswald says something really key. God wants you to understand that it is a life of faith, not a life of sentimental enjoyment of his blessings, right? Do you see the difference? A life of faith means trusting in who Jesus is no matter what trial you're going through. Sure, you'll have some mountaintop experiences, but you've got to trust him in the valleys too, okay? Don't take your life into your own hands. Put your life in his. So will we make faith the heroic effort of our lives? Will we? Will we fling ourselves in reckless confidence on God as our faith is exercised and tested? Will we trust and obey him with glad, reckless joy with each day that we spend with Jesus? Scott Martin says we can if we will, and I agree with that. Um, So accept the challenge, you guys. Make faith the heroic effort of your life. Put your life in the hands of Jesus. He is trustworthy and let him take you through the tests, the trials, so that you may come out the other side perfected, changed. You've grown because you've been tested. Um, Accept it. As always, I bless you. I love you guys. I'm grateful for you. And I commit to always tell you the truth. Until next time. Bye. Bye.